Hi, this is Arthur, and this is a summary and explanation of the story of all main quests from the game Withering Waves version 1.0. In a cosmic place, a woman in white inserts her glowing hand into the chest of another woman and gives her a mark on her hand. The woman in white then sends her away. The other woman finds herself in water while an upside-down world appears before her. That woman is then woken up by two women named Chisha and Yang Yang. They are currently in the Gorges of Spirits. Side note, the Gorges of Spirits is located on the outskirts of the city, Jinzhou. Jinzhou is one of many cities within the country of Huanglong. Huanglong is one of many countries in this world of Solaris III. The woman doesn't remember her name or her past. Yang Yang decides to call her Rover since she seems like someone who roves around. They travel together and Yang Yang says Rover must be a resonator based on the mark on her hand and the gourd on her waist. That mark is known as a tacit mark, and the gourd is called a pangu terminal. Resonators usually have both and possess special abilities. Along the way, they bump into monsters known as tacit discords. Tacit discords are common in this world. They continue on and find a giant statue of a dragon. Rover then receives a vision meeting the dragon. Rover snaps out of it and Yang Yang explains the statues of Zhe, the sentinel of Jinzo. Side note, Huanglong has one capital and six cities. Each city has its own sentinel watching over it. Rover tells them about the vision and Yang Yang finds it interesting. Usually, only the magistrate of Jinzo can speak with Dre. They continue on and see someone named Baijie. Baijie is examining a tacit field, a place that spawns tacit discords. This tacit field seems new, so it should be safer now. They meet up with Baijie and just as they're about to leave, a tacit discord called Crownless attacks. Rover defeats it and it leaves behind an echo. Yang Yang explains everything in this world is made up of frequencies and reverberations. An echo is the lingering reverberation of a tacit discord and can be absorbed into the Pangu terminals. Once absorbed, echoes can be used in battle. Rover tries to absorb the echo into her Pangu terminal, but fails. Baizu says they should leave and just as they do, Rover's tacit mark glows and she absorbs the echo into her body. This is not normal and the group is amazed. Yang Yang recalls a book describing celestial beings who could do what Rover just did. Just then, they get a message from Jingsi, the magistrate of Jinzo, welcoming all visitors to Jinzo. They head over to Jinzo, and it seems someone is discreetly watching them. Yang Yang and Baijie leave to fulfill their duties while Qixia shows Rover around. Soon, Yang Yang contacts them and tells them to head to City Hall. They do so, and Rover heads inside to meet Jingsi. However, Jingsi isn't there, and Rover meets Sanhua instead. Sanhua is Jingsi's bodyguard. Sanhua says Jingsa will return in three days to meet her. Sanhua then gives Rover some tokens and asks her to investigate them. Sanhua mentions she can see the frequencies of living beings and Rover looks similar to Jingsa. Before leaving, Sanhua grants Rover access to the entire region and offers her lodgings. Rover leaves and meets with Chisha and Yang Yang. They go over the tokens which consist of a sundial, a piece of candy called a sugar pearl, a leaf, and a mangosteen. They head to Huashu Academy and Chisha leaves to do something. They head inside and meet Mortefi, a renowned figure in the Department of Safety. Mortefi says he'll get Baijie and leaves. They meet with Baijie who gives Rover a physical exam and gives Mortefi the tokens for analysis. Baijie examines Rover and confirms she really absorbed the echo into her body. Baijie then makes Rover go through some simulations when Rover suddenly receives a vision of a strange tacit discord holding a scythe. Rover wakes up and tells Baijie what happened. Baiza explains the simulated training ground was based off the structure of a sonorosphere. Side note, Jian's companion quest involves a sonorosphere. In that quest, Jian describes sonorospheres as an illusion made of memories and remnant frequencies. Baiza says their simulations can't prevent abnormal frequencies from entering the simulation. Baiza suspects Rover's unconscious mind either resonated with the abnormal frequencies already in the system, or that Rover's subconscious brought them into the simulation. They then speak with Mortefi about the tokens. Mortefi says the sundial is hollow inside and contains a scroll. If they can find the sundial's missing components and fix it, they can get the scroll. They get the necessary parts and give them to Mortefi. Baiza then reports the mangosteen is just an ordinary mangosteen. The leaf, however, produced two distinct tacit discord frequencies, which is unusual. Baiza suspects it was taken from an area struck by wave-worn phenomena. After something called the Lament, anomalies arose like the Tacid Fields, the Etheric Sea, Retroact Rain, and Gravity Loss. All of these things are called Wave-Worn Phenomena. Side note, the people of this world generally refer to a series of disasters as a Lament. 
The etheric sea seems to refer to the phenomena from the beginning of the game where Rover appeared in an upside-down body of water. Bides explains the sugar pearl was actually a vaccine that expired 20 years ago. Yang Yang adds it may be related to a children's epidemic that occurred 20 years ago. Morteffi pops in and says he's fixed the sundial, but they still need to figure out and align the symbols on it in order to open it. Bides says the symbols relate to the filing system used in the Grand Library. They do some research and afterwards, Yang Yang talks about the children's epidemic. When Yang Yang was a child, an epidemic ravaged Jinzo's children. Tacit discord attacks isolated people, so they self-experimented with various cures like the sugar pearl. Yang Yang then dumps a bunch of information on them. Tacit discords were born in and invaded from the Norfall barons. The crownless are special tacit discords that embody war and are formed from fallen warriors and the fear of survivors. The crownless seem to be directly connected to the Thurnodian. The Thurnodian is the most powerful tacit discord they know of. A while back they fought a war against it in the Norfall barons and fended it off. Dre, the sentinel of Jinzo, manifested during that battle. They eventually call it a day and as Rover leaves we see two persons discreetly watching her and Sanhua discreetly watching them. The next day they meet up and look into the leaf and the mangosteen. Rover tells them about an earlier vision and Yang Yang suspects it is related to the Norfall barons. The Midnight Rangers, Jinzo's military force, have a base there. They decide to go there and investigate. Chisha leaves and they head to the city gate where they meet a resonator named Jan Shin. Jan Shin does not have authorization to leave the city so Rover uses her authorization from Sanhua to help her leave. Jan Shin thanks them and explains she is looking for someone named Zhi Yuan. Jan Shin ran into Zhi Yuan's grandfather and learned he is missing so now she's looking for him. Zhi Yuan enlisted in the Midnight Ranger so Jan Shin believes he is at the Midnight Ranger's camp in Desorok Highland. Jan Shin also mentions she is a martial artist that trained in seclusion until she wanted to explore the world. They eventually make it to the base at Desorok Highland and speak to an officer. The officer tells them where Zhi Yuan is and Jan Shin goes to find him. Rover then asks about the mango steen and the officer says it looks like a grenade. The officer explains that during the lament, technology regressed and they were forced to use things like grenades. Eventually, the development of tacitite weapons phased out the older technology. They catch up with Jan Shin and she says she found Zhi Yuan and will take him back to his grandfather. They say goodbye and Rover suddenly sees a vision of General Ji Yan fighting Tass Discords. They conclude that Rover's visions actually happened and Rover is somehow connected to the Norfall Barons. They turn their attention to the Leaf Token and follow its fluctuations to Chicha Village. They head over and Yang Yang can feel the hatred and pain in the village. They investigate the village and find a strange tacit discord crying out for its brother. Tacit discords generally attack other living beings to feed on their frequencies and make themselves whole. Tacit discords are born when frequencies are scattered and recombined. They investigate further and find clues of the Fraxidus. The Fraxidus is a group of extremists obsessed with fusing humans with tacit discords. They've caused terror attacks all over the world. Lower ranked members are called artificers and above them are overseers. Yang Yang mentions one particularly unstable overseer named Scar. Yang Yang suspects he is connected to whatever happened to this village. Suddenly, a strange doorway sucks in Yang Yang and Scar appears. Scar says Yang Yang is safe and he's been following them. Scar says he is here as a friend and tells her what happened to this village. Side note, Scar used a fable to explain what happened in the village. Combined with clues found around the village, they form a more complete story that I'll try to convey here. A little girl came to Chicha village with its village head and was adopted by him. It seems the girl's parents passed away, likely killed by tacit discords. One day, a strange man came to the village and spoke with the girl before quickly leaving. It is likely this man was Scar. Sometime later, someone named Cece died trying to protect the girl. The girl, however, seemed to have the ability to manipulate the frequencies of tacit discords and humans and brought Cece back to life in the form of a tacit discord. Afterwards, the village head continued telling the girl to use her abilities to recombine the frequencies of tacit discords and humans. The village head keeps the girl's abilities a secret and forbids her from leaving his house. People from the village keep disappearing and the village head keeps bringing back new tacit discords. Based on Scar's fable, the village head was likely using the girl's abilities to fulfill the villagers' requests. Fulfilling these requests likely came at the cost of other villagers' lives. Eventually, the girl likely spoke up about what the village head was doing, and the village head blamed the girl instead. The villagers then surrounded the village head's house and accused the girl of being a murderer. It is implied the girl in the town eventually tore itself apart. 
After Scar finishes telling his story, Scar sucks Rover into another domain and fights her. As they fight, Rover suddenly wakes up and Yang Yang says she shattered Scar's illusion. Just then, another Fraxidus shows up and leaves with Scar. Yang Yang says Scar somehow teleported her away and it took time to return to help. They decide to look for the village head's ritual site and it seems San Hua has been discreetly following them. They eventually find it and the girl's diary that reveals things I already included in the summary. The strange tacit discord also follows them here. Yang Yang suspects the strange tacit discord was left here to convey the girl's last wishes. They head back to Jinzo and meet with Chisha. They talk about how Fraxidus wants to give everyone resonance powers. Chisha then says she looked into the files on Chicha Village and it seems all the bad guys were arrested and survivors relocated. However, there was no mention of the girl and Yang Yang suspects Scar took her away unharmed. They then look at the sundial and solve it. Inside is a map pointing to the Grand Library. In Huanglong, Grand Libraries hold valuable information and generally are only accessible by the Magistrate. Rover then gets the feeling that Jinxa wants to meet her alone, so she leaves. Rover heads to City Hall and after solving some puzzles, finds the Grand Library. Just then, Scar shows up and ambushes Rover. Sanhua and Jinxa then show up and ambush Scar. They eventually subdue and capture Scar. Turns out Jinxa hid a message in the sundial and met with Rover before entering the Grand Library. During the meeting, Jinxa says Dre, the sentinel of Jinzo, was captured by Fraxidus. Jinxa was missing because she was looking for him. Jinxa says Scar is responsible for Dre's capture. Scar's goals in Jinzo were to capture Dre, find Rover, test Rover's strength, recruit Rover, and resurrect the Thronodian. Rover and Jinxa agree to work together to capture Scar. Jinxa then talks about the Thronodians. Thronodians are the enemies of humanity, born from the dark side of humanity's collective consciousness. Rover absorbed into herself the Crownless earlier, which possesses powers given by the Thronodian. Rover can seemingly resonate with tacit discords. Jingsa then tells of a hero with similar powers who saved Huanglong during the Thronodian War. Rover tells Jingsa about a vision she had of Dre earlier. Jingsa then suspects Rover is that hero from the past. We cut back to the Grand Library where they are interrogating Scar. Scar dumps a bunch of information. Scar says he kidnapped Dre because Sentinels can predict and correct potential futures. Kidnapping Dre was necessary to continue their plans. Scar says reviving the Thronodian will bring about the true Lament and usher in a new world that Fraxidus desires. Scar explains that the Lament brings death, destruction, and countless reverberations. Scar believes these reverberations will lead to new life forms and civilizations which will be their salvation. Scar confirms he is not the only overseer in Jinzo. Scar then whispers a secret to Jinxa about Dre's abduction. Jinxa seems shocked and Scar throws a card at Rover before being sent to jail. Jinxa says she needs to investigate Scar's claims. Jinxa also tells Rover a message from Dre. Dre's message states Rover should go to Norfall Barrens and find General Jian when the raindrops fall upstream. Jinxa then talks about a secretive organization called the Black Shores. The Black Shores manage a lament detection system and partner with countries worldwide. The Black Shores asks Jinxa about Rover and Jinxa gives Rover a photo of a Blake Bloom usually worn by their members. Rover then sees another vision of herself with Dre wearing a Blake Bloom. Jinxa suspects there is a connection between the Black Shores and Rover. San Juan and Rover say goodbye before Jinxa speaks with someone named Chang Li. They talk about what Scar whispered, which is that Dre predicted it will have to fight Jinxa one day. Jinxa then leaves to find Dre. Rover meets with Yang Yang and Chisha again and tells them what happened. Yang Yang explains Jinxa was selected by Sentinel Dre. Yang Yang then talks about the battle beneath the Crescent. At the time, Jinzo soldiers had fought for years to retake the Norfall Barons. Side note, at this point they start referring to the Thronodian as Overthrax. The general at the time, Geshu Lin, led his forces against Overthrax. They seemed to be winning until the retroact rain began falling. Carnage ensued and Geshu Lin ordered all soldiers to stand firm, leading to massive casualties. Geshu Lin then attacked the Overthrax and was never seen again. The soldiers despaired until Jian led the remaining forces towards a hard-won retreat. Jian was then selected by Dre to be the new general of the Midnight Rangers. After that battle, Dre also selected Jingsa to be the new magistrate, and Jingzo prospered. After the history lesson, they speak to Grandma Lin and ask her about the Blake Bloom. Grandma Lin points them to a plant resonator named Verena. They speak to Verena, who creates an imitation of the Blake Bloom based on the photo Jingsa gave Rover. Chisha and Yang Yang plan on wearing these imitations to draw out Blackshore members in Jinzo. 
Meanwhile, Rover will head further up the mountain to draw out someone following them. They split up and Rover catches her follower. The follower says she is Camellia and she is a member of the Black Shores. Camellia says she's been following Rover because she is interested in recruiting her and has even been protecting her from Fraxida's forces. Camellia eventually escapes and Rover meets with Chisha and Yang Yang again. They then meet Alto and Encore. Alto is an information broker and he and Encore are members of the Black Shores. Alto offers to give Rover information if she helps him with something. Alto then gives Rover a real Blake Bloom before leaving. Rover lets Chisha and Yang Yang know what happened before meeting with Alto and Encore. They meet at a Court of Savante research facility. Alto explains the Court of Savante was an organization that did mysterious science experiments. One day, all members just vanished and all the resonance beacons in the area were damaged. Resonance beacons are essential for detecting laments, so Alto and Encore came to investigate. They head into the facility and discover the Court of Savante was trying to recreate the Retroact Rain. Alto explains Retroact Rain is a form of remnant energy from the Etheric Sea. Events across space and time are recorded in the form of remnant energy. The Retroact Rain takes those events and conjures up illusions of the past to those exposed to the rain. They successfully restore power to the facility and see a hologram of one of the researchers asking for help and encouraging them to reach the real gate. Then, the woman in white from the beginning of the game shows up in the hologram before disappearing. They follow the beacon signal to the lower levels of the facility where they find a big monster. It seems the monster ate the beacon. They fight the monster and defeat it. Afterwards, Alto sums up what they've learned. The researchers here were a small faction of the Court of Savante Committee that were studying an ancient civilization of divine beings. The researchers believe these beings once visited the area, which is why they tried using the Retroact Rain to recreate those past events. When they failed, they tried to create the beings themselves, but ended up creating the monster they just defeated. That monster was fed all sorts of things until it became driven by the frequencies of hunger. Alto suspects a Fraxidus Overseer was involved in what happened next. The monster likely used frequencies of hunger to lure in all researchers and consume them. With the tasks resolved, Alto now answers Rover's questions. Like he said before, the Black Shores use resonance beacons to monitor the Lament. Their island headquarters is built on a massive piece of tacitite ore. Blake blooms are produced there. Alto confirms Camellia is a member of the Black Shores. Alto came to Jinzo to warn the Magistrate that Thronodian is about to revive. Lastly, Alto says this isn't the first time Rover has been reawakened. Last time she awoke at the Black Shores. Alto says they share the same goals of stopping the Lament and the Thronodian. The Blake Bloom he gave her earlier is also a key to the Black Shores headquarters. Just before they leave, Alto checks the resonance beacon again and is shocked. They head outside and Alto says there is retroact rain. Just then, Yang Yang calls and says Jinzo is under attack. Cut to Jian at a midnight ranger's base in the Deso Rock Highlands. Retroact rain is falling there too, but the troops have been given an antidote and are combat ready. Jian then sees an illusion of General Geshu Lin. It seems Jian tried to convince Geshu Lin not to fight during the retroact rain during the battle beneath the crescent. Geshu Lin didn't listen. Jian tells Geshu Lin's illusion he will not devalue his soldiers' lives. Just then, the rain lets up and Jian orders the attack. Cut to the unnamed Fraxidus Overseer we saw earlier summoning Tacit Discords. Cut back to Rover fighting off Tacit Discords with Chisha and Yang Yang. They fend them off and Rover meets with Tao Chi. Tao Chi is a director at the Ministry of Development and is in charge of the city's defenses. Jinzo remains safe for now as its defenses protects the city from the Retroact Rain. Alto and Encore are there too. Alto says the illusions in Retroact Rain are called phantoms. Normally, phantoms can't harm people. However, the Thronodian's power can enhance the Retroact Rain, causing the phantoms to be able to cause actual harm. In the battle beneath the Crescent, phantoms indiscriminately attacked everything, causing massive casualties. Alto goes on to say that Thronodians are telepathically linked. If one revives, it will cause catastrophes all over the world. Alto now leaves as he needs to report back and warn the other nations. Just then, another wave of tacit discords attack and they fend them off again. Jinxa then calls Tao Chi and speaks to Rover. Jinxa reminds Rover of Dre's prophecy and Rover is ready to go to the front lines. Jinxa says goodbye and Rover heads to the front lines with Yang Yang. Cut to Desa Rock Highlands where Jian and his forces defeat a wave of tacit discords. Jian gets a call from Tao Chi about Rover and he clears a path for them. Cut back to Rover who is trying to reach Jian. They eventually meet with Jian while defeating tacit discords along the way. 
Jian gives them the antidote to the Retroact Rain and talks about a prophecy Dre gave him. Dre told Jian Rover would come to Norfall Barrens one day and reclaim her power from the Thronodian. Dre told Jian to help Rover and that's why he's here. Jian then explains the big weird moon currently in the sky is called the Void Plenilume. When it fully forms, Overthrax will fully awaken. They head over to the Vanguard base when Overthrax reconstructs a massive statue. Three years ago, the Midnight Rangers gravely injured Overthrax, sinking that statue. It seems Overthrax is getting stronger. Once at the base, they see Janshin who joins them. They then talk strategy. Basically, all forces will hold off the tacit discords while Jian, Yang Yang, Rover, and Janshin will rush the statue and crush their source of power. Before that, they need to secure a powerful weapon known as the Disruptor. The Disruptor can break through the barrier currently protecting the statue. Rover and Yang Yang secure and repair the Disruptor and meet up with Jian and Janshin again. They fire the Disruptor, which takes down the barrier. All forces then rush the statue. Along the way, Janshin and then Yang Yang stay behind to hold off enemies while Jian and Rover continue on. The Disruptor also fires another shot thanks to Mortefi and creates an opening in the statue. Jian and Rover rush in and defeat a Crownless before fighting another powerful tacit discord Jian recognizes from the battle beneath the Crescent. As they are fighting, Rover seems to gain new abilities and a wing. As they near victory, the powerful tacit discord fires a blast at them. Just then, a little creature appears from Rover's tacit mark and absorbs the blast. They then look around and it seems Overthrax has retreated. The little creature then hops back into Rover's tacit mark and they leave the collapsing statue. As the Void Plenilume disappears, all the tacit discords disintegrate. Rover and her allies have won the battle. And that is the end of this quest in this video. If you like what you've seen here, please like, comment, and subscribe.